Uh, in this video, we will uh, demonstrate to you a very important circuit in instrumentation. We call it voltage follower or a buffer circuit. So what is this circuit? Basically, what we do, we go to the non-inverting amplifier and we remove the 10 kilo ohm resistance that was connected between the output terminal or pin number 6 and the input of the uh, amplifier or terminal number two. So we remove this resistance and substitute instead here, as you can see, a short circuit. We just short circuit these two, uh, these two terminals. So let's go and now and see the output. My output is 0.66, my input is almost the same. So as I increase the input, getting higher and higher voltage. So basically your output is following your input. This is why it is called a voltage follower. Your output voltage is following the input voltage. The question is why we need a circuit just that just give me uh, exactly the same input. Why this circuit is important in instrumentation. Please join me in this small demonstration to discuss the importance of the voltage follower in instrumentation circuits. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, okay, now let's answer the question that why we need the voltage follower circuit? What is the practical application of this circuit? If your V out will be equal to Vs, why we need such a circuit? Uh, before we, uh, we move on, uh, to analyze the voltage follower circuit is very easy. We know that from the uh, non-inverting amplifier that VP is basically is equal to VS. So the voltage here is VS and hence VN is also VS. Now what we did here, we just substitute R2, the feedback resistance with a short circuit. So this is the same node. So the voltage here V out will be is equal to VS. Okay, so it's a very simple circuit to analyze. Now, now let's understand why we need this circuit. To answer this question, let's start with a simple voltage divider. Assume that you have certain voltage, uh, let's say 10 volt, and it's a fixed voltage. You cannot change its value, but you want to get from it a fixed 5 volt. So what do we do? We do a voltage divider. Very simple. We know that V out is basically equal to Vn times R2 the voltage that we are measuring across divided by R1 plus R2, which is equal to 10 times, since both are equal to one kilo, so this is one kilo divided by one kilo plus one kilo, which is equal to five volt. So I can get here five volt. Now, if I bring a voltmeter to measure this and uh, connect this one to this point that, uh, uh, red terminal and the black terminal here, you will measure actually also 5 volt. Why is that? Because simply the current that goes here, I, is almost equal to zero. Why is that? Because the input impedance of the voltmeter is basically almost equal to infinity, very, very high value. So the current that goes here, I1 will be almost the same as I1. The current that goes here, it's the same I1. No current here will go into the voltmeter. Okay. Now, imagine I want to use this circuit now to feed another circuit, which is the, this one. So I want to use my voltage divider, my 5 volt here, to feed another circuit, and I just give here some numerical uh, numbers to just demonstrate that in terms of quantitative analysis. Okay, so I connect this one here, and I want there here, and I want this to be 5 volt, but it will not be 5 volt. Why? Because what we call, what we call is the loading effect. This circuit will load the voltage divider. What do we mean by loading effect? Now, let's find the equivalent impedance of all of those resistors. So we have this two kilo and this two kilo are in parallel, in series with this one and in parallel with R2. So let's find the R equivalent. So our R equivalent would equal to two kilo 
in parallel with two kilo, which will equal to one kilo. In series with the two kilo, so plus two kilo, which is three kilo ohm. In parallel with the R2, so this is will be in parallel with one kilo ohm. So we'll have three kilo times one kilo divided by three kilo plus one kilo, which is equal to 0.75 kilo ohm. So this overall resistance as if it's equal to 0.75 kilo ohm. So R2 now is not R2 is not any more 1 kilo ohm. Instead, R2 basically is equal to now 0.75 kilo ohm. Now if I apply the voltage divider again now, let's see what we'll get here. Your V out, the voltage input now. You want to enter it to the circuit, so your V out will equal to 10 times, and instead of 1, now it comes 0.75 kilo divided by 0.75 kilo plus 1 kilo, we will get 4.28 volt, not 5 volt. And every time I change the resistance, I will impact, I will affect the output voltage, which is bad. I don't want that. I want to have a fixed 5 voltage. Another th way to look to into it is the loading effect. Now, this current I is not equal to 0. So the current here will have I1 and here will have I2 and they are not equal because we will have a current here going to the load, IL. So how to solve this problem? Here comes the voltage follower or the buffer circuit. So basically what we do, we insert the buffer circuit or the voltage forward in between. So we connect the output voltage here to Vs and here. So the voltage that we get here is your Vs, which is equal to your V out. And this will be equal to VB, equal to VN, and your V out will be the V out, the output from here. And then we connect the circuit like this. Okay, so now I apply 5 volt for V out. Now, what will guarantee that this will stay at 5 volt is the following. We want to see, want to see the loading effect. Now, we will have here the current I1. Now, we want this to be almost I1 as well. What is the current that goes here? This is actually the current. This is the input current to the op amp. And we know that IP of the op amp is equal, almost equal to zero. So there will be no loading effect. As a matter of fact, I am isolating this circuit from this circuit. I'm isolating the loading circuit from the supply circuit. And that is the advantage of my, my buffer circuit or voltage follower. It does the isolation between the supply and, and the load. Now, please join me. I will do some demonstrations and I will show every single circuit and the impact of each one on my, on my demo. So uh, this is the circuit I just explained to you. So here basically we have the voltage divider. So we have here two uh, one kilo ohm resistors in uh, series with each other. And here we have the loading circuit, one two kilo ohm resistance in series with two kilo ohm resistance in parallel. Okay, so now the circuit is disconnected as you can see here, they are not connected to each other. So my voltage divider here, is isolated from the loading circuit. So my input voltage is 10 volt and my output voltage is 5 volt. So that's what exactly uh, we want uh, to, to have. Now, let me see now the impact of the loading. Let me connect this circuit here now into my uh, circuit there and see the impact of the loading circuit. So see now that's the output. The output voltage now dropped from 5 volt to 4.3. Theoretically it was 4.27, but because of the discrepancy of the equipment, then you, you, you will have a, a, different, uh, a bit different voltage. Now let's insert the buffer circuit in between and see what will happen. Now we connected the buffer uh, circuit between the voltage divider and the loading circuit.
So what did we do here? Uh, this is the output of your uh, voltage divider is taking as an input to your uh, buffer circuit to terminal 3 through the uh, quantum ohm resistance and the output of your buffer circuit is basically the input now uh, to your loading circuit okay so now let's see what will happen here when switch on the power supply so the voltage now at the output of your voltage divider is basically equal to a uh, 5 volt doesn't change with the loading circuit now if I take this terminal and measure the voltage at the input directly the input of my uh, loading circuit again you will have a 5 volt fixed so this is why we need to use the buffer circuit is basically to isolate the supply from my loading circuit